Hello there, my friends. Chris Marcus here with you on, looks like, Tuesday, October 9th. Today, a quick video with some thoughts I've been wanting to share for a while that some people ask me that. Sometimes I think about on my own of whether President Trump is doing a good job or not. Certainly, I am very well aware that there are a lot of folks that are <laughs> actively respond violently when they hear his name and i get that i understand there are certainly a lot of things that i also feel he says that are a little bit silly um case in point even long before he got elected if you go back before uh i think it was before the 2012 election when he there's a couple of videos on youtube where he's bragging about how he ripped off Gaddafi in a deal and if I recall correctly, I think he said something pretty darn close to we kicked Iraq's ass, so we should go in and take the oil, it's ours. Um, so certainly stuff like that, not a big fan of. Um, yet, the reason I felt it was worthwhile to make this video is that to answer my question of if he's doing a good job or not, well, like many things, it depends. Although in this case, I could see a case for him being a complete disaster and also being perhaps a true hero that will go down in history or maybe somewhere in between. And really, I guess that depends on what's actually happening. So to explain that, you know, before, again, I approach this primarily from a financial market perspective. Again, I used to work on Wall Street for 11 years after college before the housing bubble opened my eyes and I realized what I knew as the financial system was a Ponzi scheme that would make Bernie Madoff blush. In fact, if you remember when Madoff was going to jail, he said, if you want to look at a real Ponzi scheme, look at the U.S. Treasury. Um, and this time he was telling the truth because, I mean, it's not rocket science. The uh, debt's up to 21 trillion, which just to put that in perspective, when baby Bush entered office in 2000, debt was about 5 trillion. So after 225 years of a country, we had 5 trillion in debt. He doubled that to 10 trillion. Obama doubled that to 20 trillion. Now Trump, in their uh, budget meetings, you already hear them talking about when it's going to hit 30 trillion. I mean, these are insane numbers, except for the fact that if Congress were not committing accounting fraud in violation of the GAAP, generally accepted accounting principles, that they require companies to follow, they had a hearing when Enron violated them, and Congress actually does the same accounting fraud, and I'm not. <laughs> You know, I used to be worried about, am I going to say something that's going to get me sued or libelous? Although I don't know really how you would dispute that because if you actually factored in the obligations to Social Security and Medicare, the economist named Lawrence Litnikoff, who actually I'll be interviewing on the Stock Pulse Network in a week or so, excited about that. He calculates that if you really follow the same, and I'm not coming up with any new system, but if, if, a, if Congress follow the actual rules they require corporations to follow, Klitnikov estimates the true debt when you factor that in would be over 200 trillion in, <laughs> in an economy that has a GDP of less than 20 trillion. And to put that in perspective, we see Argentina, Venezuela, some of these other countries entering currency crises with debt, with debt to GDP ratios of 40 or 50%. And if you actually had real, I mean, even the public numbers are over 100%. I mean, does it get to 1,000% if you factor the other stuff in? So what's the point here is that, again, now this is my own personal belief. I don't think I'm alone here, but I've come to believe that what we think of Democrats and Republicans is two wings of the same baseball team and you get people fighting, all that energy of people getting riled up against each other. While my personal belief is that whether you call it the deep state, new world order, Illuminati, or otherwise Rothschilds, Rockefellers, um, 
<clears throat> I imagine they're sitting there giggling from the top again. You don't have to take my word for anything that's saying here. I believe everything I say can be verified. Of course, if not, you're welcome to leave a comment below. I will respond to them uh, and provide documentation of anything I'm saying here. But for anyone who's familiar with the book, The Creature from Jekyll Island by G. Edward Griffin, who I'm also hoping to interview the same as well, which would be pretty awesome. One of the things he talks about is that going back to the, it's really about the history of the Federal Reserve and how a lot of the Red Shield banks, uh, one of the nicknames for the Rothschilds, um, you ever wanna really see some wacky stuff, dig into the uh, Salvation Army, I believe it is, and the Rothschilds connections there. A um, lot of wacky stuff, but amongst that, also, these guys are notorious for financing both sides of the war, getting both countries in debt, having a lot of people affected in a very negative way, and just making a fortune off of the whole deal. So when Trump came in and was campaigning, saying he was going to audit the Fed, which, especially from my perspective, when I think of really where this country is at, how things are going, I mean, in some ways, it really doesn't matter who's president until you address this because, you know, you see people fighting over health care, yet what's missed is that the, the banks have eaten 99% of the pie. I mean, if you just look, just measure based on gold, since when the Fed was invented till now, you have about 1% of the value of the dollar that hasn't been stolen. Um, and I would argue that if gold and silver were not being manipulated and you had a uh, market-based price, that number would show that even less than that is left. So then of course you, you have half of it being taxed so that we can build tanks and go blow stuff up. Um, so it's like you're trying to, to feed everyone with a crumb where so much of it has been stolen. So when Trump actually talked about gold standard, auditing the Fed, draining the swamp, that gave me some hope. Then we see that Goldman Sachs is the cabinet. Um, <laughs> Goldman does have probably a pretty big legal team. I'll be careful how I phrase this. Um, not a big fan. In fact, it was interesting. I did live in Greece for about half a year and a much different perspective where I would say it was common knowledge and I will just be reporting what they said. So this is, um, Factor that as you will, but it was common knowledge that whichever puppet the news media throws out and says is your president was a figurehead. And if you go and talk to, especially the younger Greek people, when I would say, suggest that Goldman Sachs is really their president, that was met with, yes, we realized that on a rather consistent basis. So, now Trump is in office, stock market bubble still soaring, and we hear him talk a lot about how, look, the economy's growing, everything is prosperous because of what I did. And if that's how he really feels, then as the economist and analyst, that would be a bit silly to me. Um, he talked about, again, the gold standard, sound money, and yet the money printing has gone on. Um, and a lot of things have gone on. So, uh, not the least of which to mention is a trade war against your largest creditor, which maybe if you're not as much in the financial field, to put it in perspective, imagine, uh, you know, someone has a gambling problem, going out to the casino, keep lodging themselves deeper and deeper into debt. And then they keep coming back. Oh, I need to double down, I need to borrow some more money, I need to borrow more. And you know, it's not a good situation. Probably if you're in a lot more debt with someone you might not want to mess with, among the things you would do or not do, you probably wouldn't go insult them and, and antagonize in any way possible when Trump talks about China being a currency manipulator. I guess in one hand, you could make an argument that that's technically true. Although given the past decade of Federal Reserve policy, keep in mind as a measure of money supply printing, 
there are many ways of looking at this, but from 1913 to 2008, the Fed's monetary base went from zero to 875 billion, which to put in perspective, following the collapse of the subprime bubble, went from 875 billion to over 4 trillion, which, I mean, these are insane numbers. This is not normal. This is Orwellian. This isn't how it's supposed to work, which it's not a surprise that we've ended up with even bigger bubbles this time around. Um, so, to see all of this continue, I think is really unfortunate. And then again, you know, to see them say, you know, China's the currency manipulator. I don't really see how that's not the kettle calling the pot black. I don't know if I got that one backwards or not, but I think you get what I'm saying. So there's a lot of stuff that on the surface of it is so bizarre that more and more over this past year, I've been wondering if, does he really believe this stuff? Is what he's saying in public really how he feels, really what's going on behind the scenes? Because at least from any logical perspective, I mean, it just doesn't add up logically. And earlier this year, I was thinking about how Trump does have a lot of experience with the bankruptcy code. And certainly, Again, I don't think this is a matter of question. I mean, the numbers are so insane that it's the money's not there, at least given the context of the facts that we are presented with. I mean, if they're already talking about 30 trillion in debt, then somehow there's a default on the way, whether they go with an implicit default, which means just printing money and kind of lying about what's going on. Or if there is an explicit default, certainly I've heard a lot of rumors of a financial reset. Um, I did see a date out there of October 10th um, was one, uh, one person's interpretation of that Economist magazine back in 1988 where it showed the new world currency in 2018. Now I know some might see that as conspiracy theory, although my Experience and research has led me to believe that a lot of these things are planned and coordinated. Perhaps you've heard that quote from George Bush where they asked him if he watches the news and he said no, he said no because he knows what's going to happen before it happens. Um, certainly if you go on YouTube and dig into some of the media being engineered and you can see a lot of this stuff is not what we were sold and told. Uh, in many ways, it's been easier for me to see since I got rid of my television in 2011 because it's stunning what's on there and not an accident that it's called programming. So again, on the surface of it, you know, there seems like it's not rocket science. These guys couldn't be that clueless that they don't see there's an issue coming to a head here. Um, so if that's all as advertised, then certainly I would be really disappointed with what Trump did. Not that I was necessarily thinking he was going to be the savior, although my impression has been is that he is not part of the banking New World Order matrix that includes Clintons and Bushes. Um, my understanding is that especially perhaps uh, in connection with the Kavanaugh nomination, that a lot of the rumors of some beyond wild and inappropriate and certainly unfortunate activities that a lot of these elite families are alleged to be involved in that I continue to hear is proven beyond a shadow of doubt on these email servers and WikiLeak documents that are coming forth. I've been trying to get access. I have not yet seen them. But from a lot of folks that I respect and a lot of developments, I am of the mind, is my opinion. I can't, it's, it's a lot, it's interesting what is fact these days. So again, that's what I have come to believe, especially that a lot of this information is coming out and folks are going to be exposed. And along those lines, if you go behind the scenes and 
big into what a lot of folks are reporting and speculating on. There is a school of thought. I couldn't tell you for sure if it's true. I am leaning myself more and more towards believing that there is some, if not a lot of truth behind it. And it gets a little bit wild, but I'll let you dig in. And uh, again, if you want to know where I heard any of these things or some resources to check out, I've put a lot of them on my site, arcadeeconomics.com. Again, we'll be happy to direct people uh, who would like to do their own verification. But there's a narrative going around that, while well, certainly there's a lot of folks that are doing some not so nice stuff in the government, the banks, and all these different monster agencies, that there is also a good faction that has been battling against some of these matrix forces for a while, with the narrative being that they know this bubble is coming to an end that behind the scenes, a lot of the infrastructure is being transitioned over to a crypto or perhaps including gold and silver backed system. And that part of the reason why Trump is saying, again, we'll find out in due time whether the stuff he's saying is what's accurate or if that's the cover, because there's a lot, continue to hear a lot of reports that there are a lot of sealed indictments Cases are being built against names that you will be shocked by, including Clintons, Bushes, Obama, and others, and that it's being done very meticulously so that if the crimes that are being alleged are indeed accurate, that they will be facing the consequences of the justice system. Again, just my own opinion. I've seen enough to believe that I'm just sharing my own opinion that I do believe those three family names have been involved in a lot of criminal activity and stuff that uh, I won't go into here because some of it is really unfortunate. Um, again, I'll be happy to provide links. Um, I don't want to go too far into the negative side today, but with the point being that Trump realizes what's going on and given the nature of how much, and when I say the banking government matrix that includes the tank builders, the prescription drugs, and all these other things that have left people with a view of the world that I don't think is accurate or natural, and I don't mean to put myself above anyone else. I've lived in it. I was working on Wall Street thinking, all right, uh, I remember going to Wharton and there's Jeremy Siegel, who everyone said, if you want a job in trading, you have to take his class. And what was he teaching? Hey, when the economy's weak, print up a fresh batch of Hondos and throw it into the market and that's the way it works, which I was fooled and was drinking the Kool-Aid myself for a long time. Until really when the housing bubble collapsed, again, you remember Bernanke, Hank Paulson, we're all talking about what a perfect storm it was that no one could have seen. Yet, I remember reading, it was actually an article about the folks that were the basis of the movie The Big Short. Now, there were people who saw it in advance. And every once in a while, I got a few brain cells left in there and you know, put them to good use. And I was like, all right, well, these guys said they couldn't see it. Now there's this other group of folks that were talking about it years in advance, um, written books about it, describing to the letter what was happening. And I thought it made sense to at least consider what they were saying since they did see it in advance. And that was what really changed my whole perspective on these things. Um, I'd say in the decades since then, I've been stunned by what I've found. Um, but to continue uh, along this alternate narrative from folks that I respect and trust, again, I can't guarantee they're right, but perhaps a good way of phrasing it is that in the same way that as Americans, and you know, I know having lived in Europe that many others are following this American perspective that's broadcast, the idea that the Americans were going into the Middle East and liberating people from the bad dictators there and were the heroes. 
I don't believe that to be an accurate representation of what's going on. Certainly, if you've ever heard of John Perkins, who wrote Confessions of an Economic Hitman, and describes in detail the way a lot of these things are engineered. Um, maybe a few quick examples. Uh, remember, remember if it's General McCollum's eight or nine point plan, but you can Google that and find a specific memorandum that was written up antagonize the Japanese and in Bangor Pocum to which led to Pearl Harbor, which in the revisionist version of history, my understanding is that this was what the American public was against the war, did not want to enter it, and they needed a way to get in. Similar to Gulf of Tonkin in the Vietnam War, you can look at the sinking of the Lusitania which led to the U.S. entrance in World War I, where the Germans warned President Wilson that they knew there were weapons on the ship. Take people off if you're going to send that ship out there, or else we're going to sink it. Again, hopefully I'm getting my details close to right. Um, although, if you Google John Denson, uh, he did some amazing interviews on the Lou Rockwell show over the past couple of years. Uh, excuse me, it's Judge John Denson. So, Man, I really respect an incredible knowledge of history, digs into a lot of these things. Although for a more recent example, of course, we can look at the weapons of mass destruction that not only did they turn out not to exist, but I've gone and seen enough evidence that the folks making those decisions got to the intelligence reports that said they didn't exist, lied about it, went and blew stuff up anyway. So, not quite, at least as I was told growing up, and what some folks suggest are happening, again, I could not tell, I hope one day we'll find out for sure if it's true, but that Trump's motive behind the things he's doing, such as the trade wars, is that the speculation is that actually he does realize the dollar has been used as a great weapon of control. He realizes that there are bubbles. And in the same way that we thought we were liberating people in the Middle East from their dictators, the speculation is that Trump is actually working with Russia and China to liberate us from the dictator monarchy that we've been under, which is the banks, which is all of these agencies that control so much of the world, certainly so much of American life. And really, it's not an easy thing, especially when you think, I mean, even going back, if you look up, uh, I believe it was called the business plot. I have a tab pulled up on my computer that talks about there's suspect rumors. I was not alive in the 1930s. But essentially that these banks were going out there and trying to overthrow FDR um, J.P. Morgan and the gang, part of that is the way that story is presented. So there's a lot of power there that you really, the only way to be liberated from that is for a freeing from this banking system that controls, I mean, factor in the petrodollar, that it all props up so much of this base of power by the use of the dollar as a real weapon of terror. Um, and I don't use that word lightly. Um, I'm not that this makes anything right or not. I was in New York on September 11th, working at Moody's at the time, which was a block or two uh, north of the trade towers and actually was running from the dust cloud that day. And, it's interesting, one of the only few times, uh, except for after I first got my license and was learning to drive, <laughs> that I remember I was running up the Brooklyn Bridge, was about to get caught in a dust cloud. Really the only time in my life I remember wondering, you know, is this about to be it? Fortunately, some really kind person was driving and said, hey, do you want to get in our Ford Explorer and pick me up and um, was able to avoid that. Um, so again, I don't, not that it makes my opinion more valid, but just in the sense I'm not using that word terror lightly, but I do believe this system, 
and especially the dollar, has been used as a weapon of terror to suppress people across the globe. In the United States as well. I mean, think about how, I think if you talk to most honest people, really their goals, you know, have a place to live, be able to take care of their family, go out and do something fun. Yeah, maybe somebody wants five Bentleys and a Lamborghini, but I think the majority of people just want to live and enjoy life and be a part of a positive society. And in many ways, despite all the technology that we've had in these last century, I would imagine that meeting those basic needs is more difficult now than before the Industrial Revolution, primarily because Anytime you have an, uh, an increase in technology, you have the Fed out there saying, wait, prices are coming down, there's deflation, we have to protect from this by making everything more expensive for people, which is as asinine and, and manipulative as it sounds. A simple example, imagine if you know, you're on a simple island, it takes you all day to catch your fish, and so everyone's sitting out there fishing, and they wake up, do the same thing tomorrow. Then one day some guy builds a net and catch all the fish, which means you, you're more efficient. That's productivity. And now one guy can get all the food and the rest can go build a house or make some clothes or whatever else. And then as we get better at doing things, prices come down. A cell phone is cheaper than when they first came out. A laptop is cheaper. That's productivity. We're building on the knowledge, creating new things. Yet anytime that happens, you have the Federal Reserve coming along saying, oh, there's deflation. We got to do something about this. We're going to print more money and just take a guess at who ends up with the majority of that. So it's a very complex issue. There are those that suggest that Trump realizes this. And the way I hear it phrased a lot uh, by an analyst named Vic Weir, who digs into this is that Trump was put there primarily for one purpose and one purpose only, which was to serve as the bull in the China shop in the sense that, you know, he has his money. So it's seemingly, again, I guess any, some, you never know, but it seems like it would be higher to sit, harder to buy him off to get him to go to the dark side. Again, is that possible that happened? Sure, I really can tell you that, but is it possible that he was put in there because he is brash. He is willing, possibly, I mean, again, we don't know what's true or not. So that's why it's hard to say whether he's done a good job. But if the speculation that he was put there because he's one of the few people who is brash enough to go head to head against some very powerful folks that are willing to do some very nefarious things. And if really his intention is to bring this stuff down, bring justice to a lot of areas where there has not been a level playing field, again, certainly you saw how none of the executives at any of these banks that have done things beyond criminal have gone to jail. Um, as some of you may know, I dig into the gold and silver market a lot. I mean, some of these banks have made uh, <laughs> the billions at this point manipulating the market, or certainly multiple millions. And recently, Bank of Nova Scotia got caught. They gave them eight hundred thousand dollar fine. It's a cost. It's like a tax cost of doing business at this point. Similar. And I always wonder, where does that money go? We have all these uh, billions of dollars of fines banks paid in the mortgage market. I won't get into the whole list of other markets they've manipulated, but I don't remember ever hearing of any of that money actually going back to the people that were victimized by that. Instead, I, to be honest, I haven't been able to figure out where it goes. I'm guessing back to the government, which when you see Hank Paulson, Goldman Sachs, Secretary of Treasury, now, Steve Mnuchin, Goldman Sachs, Secretary of and they all float, not all of them, but a lot of them float in and out. So it's kind of like a one, taking it from one pocket, putting it into the other. And it's a complete mess that the currency system we have is flawed. It's nearing its end. It cannot continue. 
that much longer. I'm stunned that it's still, when I left Wall Street in 2012, I was stunned based on what I see that it's still going on. I remain stunned that six and a half years later, it's still going on. So I couldn't tell you the exact timing, except a Ponzi scheme is a Ponzi scheme. And when they do, certainly there's a lot of evidence to suggest that we're nearing the end of that. We have Russia selling all their treasury bonds. China's creating petro yuans. And all these other partners, they're loading up on gold and silver. They're telling you what they're doing. It's not a mystery. And it will be interesting to see which of these two narratives is the accurate one. Again, I have seen enough to suggest, and I don't know, maybe I'm hoping that it's the latter one that, because if Trump is doing all of that, and that's what's really going on behind the scenes, then I think that would be quite heroic and patriotic if, it's the first case and it's what we see on the surface of things is what's really going on, then it would certainly be the opposite of that. And only uh, time and will tell. Uh, hold on one last note, I just can't leave this one out. I did put a blog post on this, uh, some links to it, but I have heard from three people independently that will call this by all means a rumor. I don't know if it's true. It's insanely wild, if so, but there is a rumor going around that one of the things Trump did when he first came into office was send Mike Pence, as president, to find out what's really going on with the gold at Fort Knox. Two people independently that have been right about a lot of other things, it doesn't mean necessarily they're right about this, but suggest that Pence went there, found out the gold was long gone, taken by the Clintons and Bushes, Again, I don't know if that's true, but that is what has been alleged. And that Trump has been going after these elites, trying to recoup this money. Because again, there is a report from Dr. Mark Skidmore who found $21 trillion of missing money between the Department of Housing and Urban Development and the Department of Defense. Uh, there's a lot about the exchange stabilization fund and other dark pools of money. So there's a lot more money out there than we've been told. I can say that is about as close to a fact as you can have these days. Uh, and, you know, I'm sure they spend a lot of it, but conceivably the money is out there in accounts wherever that may be. And at least I mean, to put it in perspective, our national debt's 21 trillion. You hear these rumors that the Rothschilds have a wealth of about 500 trillion. Again, I could not tell you if that's accurate, but if it is, and the criminal behavior that is alleged is accurate as suggested, then I mean, it's at least plausible that the money is out there and if they were actually going after the people who committed crimes and saying, hey, you committed a crime to get that money in a justice system, that's coming back, raises a lot of interesting possibilities. Um, so I've never been more fascinated by what's going on for whatever it's worth. My intuition keeps wondering if there's going to be something happening before this next election especially given the way the politics go. And um, this is just, just my idea. It's not based on fact yet. Given the way the politicians love to say, oh, look, you did this, the economy collapsed, you guys screwed up. Now we bring the other side of the same team in. Um, and certainly to the degree that it seems as if the deep state very much wants to do anything possible to get Trump out of office. Um, and to the degree that I do believe in my economic and financial experience that, I mean, the whole thing's propped up. So the idea of Big Swear, again, he talks about Steve Mnuchin basically says, I want this asset price to be here, clicks a button on his mouse, and that's essentially what happens. I couldn't say that for sure, although certainly it's plausible to me that things are that manipulated. So whether you say it's Mnuchin or whoever's above him, does have the ability to say, all right, we're ready to crash it, blame it on Trump, and bring in whoever. Um, I've been wondering a lot about that. So 
certainly fascinating times and been wanting to share this for a while. Um, again, I know I'll probably get a whole wide range of reactions. Um, I can't tell you exactly what's true or fact or what's right. I'm just sharing what my research has led me to, what I've been thinking about, and what I feel is at least worth introducing to other people. And you can decide for yourself what seems right or not. But in either case, if someone wants to know if I think Trump is doing a good job or the opposite of that, depends which story is true. And hopefully one day we'll find out. I'm sure there will be books written about this for decades, um, especially if the latter case is accurate. It's nice to at least have hope and think that it could be because maybe one last closing note is that if we really are only getting 1% of our contribution to the planet, imagine if instead of 1%, we were getting 10%. So every person who's out there working two jobs or any single parent that's working around the clock and really not feeling that abundant, I think just, they woke up tomorrow and you added a zero behind your salary. So maybe someone's making $20,000 a year and really, you know, it's not easy, especially with rising prices. And now they were given the equivalent of 200,000. Certainly a lot of things would be easier. Maybe instead of working two or three jobs, can have more time with your family. Again, when you think about all, a lot of the crime that's committed, usually coming from a fear-based mentality of not having enough. Why do you rob someone? Well, you think you don't have enough. Yet, imagine if the banks were eating all that. Yeah, that's just even 10%. So, I mean, it's really, if we were using tulip bulbs or pet rocks, we'd be better off than what we're doing with the dollar now. And for what it's worth, I'll be committed to doing whatever I can to advance that cause of just, what cause am I advancing? More than anything, just bringing truth to light because I found a lot of unfortunate things happen because inappropriate things are being done behind closed doors. And I'll be hoping that President Trump is doing something about that and Certainly, if anybody else is interested in supporting, whether Trump is or not, but supporting freedom and good living and honest living for people, whether it's here or around the globe, I'd love to hear from you. So leave any comments below. I will be checking them and responding to them. And if you're still watching at this point, I appreciate you considering what I have to say here. I hope it was helpful, at least give you some things to think about or entertaining, if nothing else. Um, with that said, uh, again, I appreciate you, and I'll see you again soon.